Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Leaders' Debate 2014. This is an appointment that can't be avoided. It's highly expected and most exciting. My name is Anne-Marie Dussault. I'm with Sébastien Beauvais, my colleague from Quebec City. Welcome. Right at the outset, let me introduce the leaders. David of Quebec Solitaire. Welcome to all four of you. And especially thank you very much for having continued with us and the public now, at large. Who do you trust the most to govern Quebec? Let's get into it with the opening statements of the, one minute. Charter. Thank you, Madame Marois, Mrs. David. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. At the last debate in 2012, you discovered who I was. You appreciated my ideas and the way that I wanted to make them known. Tonight, I want you to better know a Quebec Solidaire. 124 candidates have the same ideas that I have to make of Quebec a country for everyone, a prosperous society, fairer and much, much more ecological. A solidarity team at the National Assembly will not let Quebec become a petroleum state without uh, with all inequalities. I ask you to be very careful to listen to the proposals of those that want to represent you for the next four years. For 40 years now, two parties, without any interruption, have shared power. Is it not high time to look elsewhere? Is it not high time to choose Quebec Solidaire? Thank you, Mrs. David. And now, for the very first segment, the economy, the very first main question from Sébastien Beauvais. Good evening to the four of you, and thank you for participating in this exercise. We are all hoping for prosperity. And in your opinion, it goes through job creation, uh, 40 to 50,000 uh, jobs per year, uh, per year, depending on the party. And it uh, follows the normal progression of uh, jobs in Quebec, uh, a normal progression. And it's as though you were promising that this year, Christmas will happen on uh, December 25th. It's something self-evident. Uh, but uh, the former uh, pr Premier Jacques uh, Parizeau um, is talking about relaunching our economy. Uh, the question is uh, there for each of you. You have 45 seconds to answer. We'll start with Madame Davy. Why uh, do you, uh, are you short of ambition for Quebec and where is the... Uh... Well, the horse's remedy for Quebec Solitaire is crystal clear. It's audacious, it's generous. Yes, of course, lots of jobs, but in a very specific area, and that is development of a green Quebec. And that goes through 160,000 jobs in uh, urban transportation that should take place all over Quebec. Reunite regions, cities, and reunite people. That's the audacious aspect for Quebec Solita. It's also 25,000 jobs in public service. These are jobs that very often are uh, devoted to women. We need these jobs to give services to our seniors, to young people, to families. So for Quebec Solita, the economic thing is not only jobs, but a green Quebec. The first Quebec. duo is Françoise David and Pauline Marois. Mrs. David. Thank you. Well, uh, Mrs. Marois, in the first weeks in your capacity as Prime Minister, you shut down Jean T. You were applauded. You refused a loan to the Jeffrey Mine. I also applauded you. And now oh, the result is I can't understand now why you're so wholeheartedly involved with petroleum. It seems to me that that's contradictory to all your ecological commitments. The tar sands, for example, is very polluting petroleum. The Anticosti Island is shale gas. That's also polluting. And then the uh, frac frackening is also non-ecological. I have difficulty understanding how you reconcile the beginning with what you're doing now, and why not do what we have proposed for urban transportation all over Quebec? Well, we did also propose a moratorium on shale gas uh, exploration. So, in fact, Ms. David, we are proposing a very big project, electrification of transportation, in order to use our electricity so that we can ensure that our cars are electric, Electric, that transit is electric, metro as well. But at the same time, it's important to realize that uh, we are already exporting $15 billion worth uh, of oil. We want to be independent. We want to be independent in terms of our energy needs. And we think it's important for the government to use the oil that's available on Anticosti Isle, Island, if there is, to benefit Quebecers. Not to increase uh, consumption among Quebecers, but to ensure that we can replace the oil coming from elsewhere with that uh, oil from here to 
create wealth uh, and share it among Quebecers. And we will continue to aim for that goal. Energy independence for Quebec and electrification of our transportation, a green economy that will create quality jobs. But Mrs. Marois, I have difficulty understanding how exactly you can speak about energy independence when you have pipelines for from the tar sands Ms. from David. Alberta that is emitting much more uh, Ms. David. That oil, Green gas that oil will come and uh, be uh, dealt with, processed in refineries in Montreal. Are you against job creation? I'm also going to ensure that that oil is uh, transported in a safe uh, manner and that the safety of our fellow citizens is protected. I can guarantee you that. I can guarantee all everyone uh, listening tonight about that. To transport oil in a security would have taken much more than a parliamentary commission that lasted about eight days in December where people had decided. I mean, there's really a problem with these pipelines. You know that there's no problem with the ships that are that are bringing oil to, uh, on the oceans. There are no, there's no problem with uh, trains uh, transporting oil. In all cases, there are risks. But at the same time, we have to be able to control those risks. And I think it's possible to do that. You're proposing uh, forms such as wind power. And I want to talk to you about wind power. At present, the PQ and the Liberal Party both uh, gave out a lot of contracts in wind power. They always agree to, to give out contracts for that. There's a study that shows that each job in that area of wind power uh, costs uh, $200,000 in subsidies per year to create jobs that pay $40,000 per year. What that does is that, that the losses suffered by Hydro-Quebec uh, increase uh, Hydro-Quebec's rates. So, in 10 days, Hydro-Quebec, uh, caused uh, because of losses uh, in, due to wind power, caused um, increases of 4.3%, uh, much higher than inflation. It, it costs hundreds of dollars per household. So I would like to know, Madame David, first of all, are you for continuing to uh, give out contracts that cost $200,000 in subsidies per year in wind power? And do you agree uh, with the increase of 4.3% at Hydro-Quebec uh, next uh, April the 1st? Well, Mr. Legault, we'll untangle yeah. something here. The increase of uh, Quebec Hydro is even less than what the Marois government was hoping for. And if we continue down that road in four years, Quebecers will be paying their electricity 20% higher. And no, that's not only because of the difference difficulty with wind energy, I'd like to remind you there are the harnessing of many of these major rivers, La Romaine, for example, started by the Liberals, followed by the Parti Québécois, that is totally useless and that forces us to produce electricity far much more expensive than we can sell it. As to wind energy more specifically, I would submit to you, Mr. Legault, if overnight we would shut down the plants in Matane and Gaspé, I would think it's about 800 jobs that would be lost on the Gaspé coast. It's not all that easy to say, well, that's the end of it. No, but that with which I'm in agreement with is to say that the wind energy can't start as it started a way back without any planning. And for that reason, Quebec Solidaire is proposing a public corporation but, for wind energy. I, I've asked and, two questions. And only when it's necessary and at the right place. I'm going to ask my two questions again. First of all, do you agree to grant new contracts for wind uh, energy? And do you agree with the increase of uh, four points? 0.3% in Hydro-Quebec's rates. Yes or no? Look, it's very clear. Mr. Legault, you know full well that the rates for Hydro were denounced the minute we heard tell of them. We aren't in agreement with this increase in taste, but we don't agree either. Let's organize ourselves overnight to see whether or not on the gas bay area is would be exempt because the wind plants are going to be shut down. So we're going to continue to give out contracts for wind power. We're going to continue to give out subsidies okay, we'll of 200000 Give them, but year? not in the same way. We're rationalizing wind energy at Quebec Solitaire. Well, because, you know, uh, whether you want it or not, you're all in agreement. There were jobs created in Quebec in the past year, but Quebec has, what can I say? Uh, well, it's an unsatisfactory performance. Basically, that's what all three of you are saying. What I think, indeed, is that in the past year, in the past two years, we haven't adequately been able to stimulate the economy. That's what we want to do at Quebec Solitaire. We want to stimulate the economy, not only through our major innovation,
innovative projects for the environment. We want to do so by urban transportation in all areas of Quebec, not only the electric car for individuals, and not even by beginning with that. The most important is urban transportation, collective transportation. We want to stimulate it through eco-renovation. We also want to stimulate the economy. There are areas all over Quebec that have jobs in the public sector, in the social economy, in cooperatives, in the culture industry, and on all of that, we have done very little in the past year. I think we have to multiply all those jobs, because I'll remind you that in the construction sector, we're just about at 3% women. We hope it's going to change, but the thing is, we're going to have to develop jobs all over where there are women the in time. Quebec. Mrs. David, on the health tax, of course, yes, we'll talk about that, because it's a very unfair tax, uh, thanks to the Liberal Party and approved by the Parti Québécois. It's quite clear that we want to abolish it. But let me merely remind you that if there's not enough money in the uh, government's coffers, it's because, on the one hand, there wasn't enough stimulus in the economy. Because government after government has refused to get revenues where there might be had. And I will have something to say about that later. Well, I love your question because, of course, it's dear to my heart. To my mind, the right to public services, we speak about health, education, social services. I could also speak about urban transportation and daycare. But this is a fundamental right to my mind. It's a whole issue of social justice. And I feel that Quebec has the means to avail itself of good public services. I'm convinced of this. For the past 10 years now, we have more management in the health sector than we have employees giving out services. The number of management has increased more quickly than employees. That's abnormal. And it's not, it's not normal either that today, even in Quebec, we're paying our medication much more expensive than if we were uh, able to uh, pay on the Pharma Quebec. I mean, there's all many ways of doing it. Uh, fashion and can uh, fulfill their dreams. That's where things start by creating uh riches and jobs. Well, I should think it's about 20 or 30 years that I've had successive governments tell me, Mrs. David, you know, to reallocate wealth. You have to create it. Of course you have to create wealth. I mean, we're going to have a, are we going to have a two-hour debate on that? No. That wealth is created through jobs, through stimulating the economy, but you also create this wealth through sharing uh, the wealth. That also creates wealth. Not only when people have jobs, or when they have jobs, they pay tax and income tax, that comes back to the government, and then the government can implement more uh, public services. So let's not just say, let's create wealth, and after, if it so happens, we'll reallocate it, as we see in some of the countries, and even here in Quebec. Of course, we have to create this wealth. We need to have jobs for everybody, but I'm going to tell you one thing, Mr. Couillard. There are people who, because of all kinds of personal, social, psychological, family difficulties, because of a physical disability, cannot get a job. And you know that in Quebec at the moment, a person alone on welfare receives $600 per month. When you know that in major cities, the rent at itself, I mean, two and a half rooms. Yes. You're quite right. And we need public resources in order to redistribute, as you suggest now. Uh, in Quebec, we can be a very proud. We're one of the most equal societies in North America because we redistribute wealth. But not enough yet. But we can always do better. But it starts by creating wealth. Uh, jobs are not created by the state. They're created by uh, businesses, in particular small and medium business. 50% of jobs are in uh, small and medium-sized businesses, and 75% of new jobs are there. That's why we have to support them. That's why we want to help them launch, uh, help them with exports. I was in a B2B with a, a chap who exports to Africa, and he needs support to enable to hire many people. And uh, uh, we also, the fact that the Mrs. plan Davies. was thrown up. Well, I won't uh, complain Quebec about liquidating the plan R. We can discuss this ad infinitum with the environmental consequences of saying. But I will repeat, I have nothing against a small and medium business. Of course, we have to help it when they're going through ecologically responsible routes. But also, 125,000, yes. there you go. Under the Liberal, uh, there are about 5,000 uh, 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 posts that, uh, that were eliminated 
discriminated in sen seniors. Um, this has been involved very much in the private sector. In many seniors' homes, there's no quality. This last winter, we discovered that security really wasn't there in many areas. Now, you have been announced a new wave of cuts between four and 600 million in the health sector. There are already seniors that have difficulty getting home care. I know that you put $100 million more in it, but your Minister of Health, Mr. Hebert, a few years ago, when he was a very well-known researcher, said, we need $500 million more per year if you really want to come up to the standards of residence uh, homes for seniors, and if we want our seniors to remain at home with all the care they need. I'd like to hear you on that. First of all, I don't understand where you're getting your 400 or $500 million of cuts in terms of assistance for seniors. And in fact, I agree with you that we have to increase the support we give to seniors so that they can have services at home, so that they can stay in their own environment, so that they can receive the support they need. I agree with you 150 percent, and that's exactly what we want to do. Over five years, we're increasing assistance by $100 million for people who are losing their autonomy, elderly, and uh, in five years, we expect it to reach $500 million. But we won't stop there. You know that Réjean Hébert has introduced a bold uh, project in call, which is called uh, Autonomy Insurance, which will allow us to support seniors to, in a humane way, based on their own reality. So I can tell you that that is where we want to go. And uh, in the long-term care facilities, as you know, we've reoriented uh, people towards other types of more adequate resources. That means that we people want to have their to get needs. out of their homes. And that is better suited yeah, to their needs. but that's what you're saying. But that's not how it's lived by these people on a day-to-day -day basis. I've analyzed this... Um, this in independent bill by Mr. Hebert, and I want our viewers and listeners to know it's not as easy as it looks like. If this is a project that is going to privatize even more so the, pri the goods to uh, seniors, very often uh, single women. Uh, this is a model of uh, independent insurance. No, no, hang on, have a sec. I'm not quite hindered. I want to see to it that the workers that are going to be giving these cares will be underpaid, and it's going to be always the same you problem. Recall. You know. So talk to them about that. Oh, sure, we'll talk to them. Believe you me, we oh, will. I still can't understand why you want to privatize at that rate. You're privatizing, but this is paid by public funds. Why not do that in institutions, public institutions, just squarely? And I want to say something else, Mrs. Marois. You spoke about optimization, which allows me to come back to something that's very close to my heart, just like all of us. The whole issue of our seniors, optimization in many of the health institutions, whether they be uh, C, uh, uh, homes or hospitals. What this means is you're, you're, cal you're figuring out how much time it should take to help someone who has just gone through mourning, how much time uh, allotted to feed someone who can't do it alone, how much for the time that you'd give a bath to an individual. You know, Mrs. Marois and all of us here, you know what the result is, is that services to our seniors, fact-wise, are of less quality than before, and that the staff is just fed up. The breakdown Ms. of all David, the staff is just Ms. David, you're describing a situation that uh, uh, we are in the process of correcting. Worried about my integrity, should I become premier of the province? However, there's something more that I want to say. Quebec Solidaire has done exceptional work right as of 2010 to have the people discover the use of these um, fictitious names in many of the firms. Uh, in the construction sector, and they've recognized their guilt. We've understood that these um, so-called names, uh, except Quebec Solidaire, was never, never questioned by the uh, chief electoral officer through this system. What I want to be committed to is that I want the chief electoral officer to have many more resources, human resources, fi financial resources, to go even uh, further. Uh, sir. 
Firstly, this whole issue of laws that were passed on integrity, we did pass them, all of us at the National Assembly. These were voted on unanimously, and I think we should pat ourselves on the back for that. Now, don't be too sad about something. Mr. Couillard knows full well that we are not of the same opinion on an awful lot of issues, including those of an economic nature, and for that matter, questions having to do with the Charter of Quebec values. However, Mrs. Marois, I have to tell you something. Integrity is also uh, tantamount to coherence. When you came to power, you did so on a program that I would be center-left. As I recall, uh, the summer of 2012, and I recall that in June you had those uh, pots and pans, you uh, had the red uh, badge on your suit. That's why you were criticized. You gave a lot of hope to a lot of people by saying that there would be important change. The the problem is that this didn't happen. There were tremendous cuts in health, education, That's public not true. transportation, uh, help for the handicapped. We put uh, an end to a social crisis that we'd never seen before in Quebec, and that was brought about by the Liberal government that came before us, that wanted to increase uh, tuition fees by 82 percent. So we got people together at a summit, and we decided we would invest uh, more money in our universities, and the tuition fees are now indexed, which is a reasonable approach. Since 1985, there are more people that are now going to be receiving uh, grants than before. Oh, no, Mrs. Marois, the Maple Spring was the hope of an awful lot of people. Mrs. Marois will give it back to you for the last one-on-one. -on -one. You will be uh, on a one-on-one -on -one with Mr. Couillard. In this segment, Mr. Couillard, we have been discussing integrity, corruption, collusion. We're discussing all these issues. Nonetheless, I have a question for you. You were the Minister of Health. Not that long before you left your department, a decree was adopted which was opening to the private sector all kinds of sur surgery procedure, procedure without we really re realizing, but we had to put up with it. Two weeks after you left, you ended up in a consulting firm that was working in establishing private clinics. And all this by having said over the years that you would be defending the uh, public sector. Quebec Solidaire, well, we introduced last December a quite a complete report on lobbyism in Quebec. Now I'd call upon you to read it for that matter, because it clearly shows without a doubt that this uh, uh, revolving door system, there's a former minister that ends up being a consultant, another one ends up as being a lobbyist for, for, for such and such a firm. We're making a proposal in that report, and I'm going to ask you whether or not you agree with the proposal. A minister will no longer be able to be a lobbyist for a company carrying out lobbyism on a government five years after uh, leaving pu the public life, his public life. Madame David, I was never a lobbyist, so I would like to have a look at your report. But in your introduction, there was an error in fact. And I would ask you to check it out after the debate, and we can talk about Urge it offline. you respectfully to check. There's not one surgery on that list that was not already practiced in private places before. Like what do you think of our proposal what you think on about lobbyism? and whether you yourself lobbyism. did some. Whether you were a lobbyist or not, would you agree with the fact that a former minister cannot be a lobbyist for a company dealing with the government for a five-year period? De deals with the government, yes. There are already limits and currently, and I think it's reasonable. But nonetheless, we have to recognize that people who leave politics, you know that political life is difficult. It's hard to find a job unless someone is uh, privately rich, which is not my case, and I don't believe it's the case for you. We have to work. So if we have professional companies, Competency. Is this legitimate to be able to exercise them after a certain period of inactivity? For how long? Uh, I think that the current rule of two years is good enough. I think we shouldn't go further. After two years, uh, we're completely disconnected we're from the, uh, that I interrupted you, Madame Lusso. I apologize, but I had to do it. I'd like to come back to the uh, question of Mr. Pelado. I believe, Madame Marouin, but it's uh, insufficient for him to place his funds in a brine trust and allow me to explain why. When one uh, controls even uh, through a blind trust, 40 percent of the electronic and written media in Quebec uh, blind trust isn't enough. I think you should have asked him, and I think you still can, to sell his shares if he wants to remain in politics. He has to choose. It's not a usual business, the media. The freedom of the press is not a usual issue. I 
think that you should have had more authority and better judgment by requiring of Mr. Pinedo that he completely sell his shares before jumping into politics. Well, I don't think uh, you can pass judgment on me, Mr. Couillard. And perhaps you should be a little bit more prudent in terms of the terms you use. Uh, it certainly hasn't I have no served lessons you that to learn well from you, ma'am. Once again, we have a code of ethics. It is very demanding and rigorous. Uh, just a second, just a second here. You're challenging the integrity of uh, journalists who won't uh, abide by their own code of ethics Mrs. Marois, or the rules that govern them everywhere throughout the world all across the world in a, in a situation like this it would be unacceptable it's the ethics it's commissioner who will make specific recommendations and if that happens we will follow them but please don't call into question my my judgment it doesn't serve you well uh, mrs david well as to the issue you have raised uh, to my mind, it's a self-evident that anybody who has 40% of interests in the media in Quebec and in the world and the sector of communication cannot, by the same token, continue to own them and become, let's say, Minister of Finance, Minister of Industry, uh, President of the Treasury Board. I think that somebody like Mr. Pelado won't take the uh, Ministry of Family. I don't think he will. It's unthinkable to my mind. So therefore, uh, listen, I'm not going to decide on my, uh, my ministers here. Yes, but there are rules that have to be reviewed. I mean, something that goes perhaps beyond Mr. Pelado's case. Last winter, I was somewhat surprised to learn that uh, we were not asking of the members of the National Assembly, and I'm one of those, as to their foreign investments. We made the recommendation to the Ethics Commissioner at the National Assembly that uh, he or she should ask for this, because the worst of situation would be to discover that members of the National Assembly or min ministers have investments in tax havens. Nobody wants that in Quebec, and I take the opportunity that if you want to go further as to ethical questions and fighting corruption, I think that we're going to have to go a little bit further with the uh, uh, hairdressers, secretaries, and all the rest. And I think we're going to have to go even further and a little bit higher and say, uh, let's really attack the big yeah, fish. But we don't count the same way all the same time. And there's at least one question. For that matter, there are many on which upon Quebec Solitaire is quite different from all the three other colleagues, is that we want to seek new revenues. All three of you, and that has struck me since the beginning, you speak about job creation. We agree. We also have our job creation plan but you've constantly speaking about cuts, cuts. You're always involved with cuts. And Mrs. Marois's budget has said that she's also going to be cutting in upcoming years. What we're proposing to fund public services are, of course, to put an end to waste and to useless expenditures, but even more to get new revenues where they can be had. Thank you, Mrs. David. Well, Mr. Beauvais, I have to tell you that you're wrong because Quebec Solidaire, not only are we not shying away from this issue, but we're going to be dealing with it at the very first mandate. And this is real business, this whole issue of national unity. Jobs, too, but so is the national issue. To give a future as a people, to decide of our own future, to choose how we want to live, with which language, with which culture, to choose the kind of country we want by saying, as Vigneault said, all humans are of my race. That's a project for Quebec Sol Solitaire. This is enthralling for us. It's mobilizing us. We want to bring the people to be as convinced as we are that there is this collective plan, really, uh, in Francois David and Mr. Legault. Madame David, uh, Mr. Legault, I want to come back to the whole issue of sovereignty because there's something that I haven't grasped fully. You were very much a, so a sovereigntist, and I don't... Uh, cast any doubt on your convictions in this regard. Now, I don't know, are you a sovereigntist? Are you a federalist? Are you fed up with the whole issue? It's not quite all that clear. And what I don't understand is that the sovereigntist plan is a good one. It's a, If it relies on a collective plan, common values, a language, a culture, past history, uh, prosperity that you want to build uh, together, and of course on individual freedoms, on secularism, the 
equality between men and women. But the Sovereignist pro Project doesn't really deal with that. And do you not think that Quebec can avail itself of it, these full powers, really, to uh, influence its life, its destiny? Do you not think First of this all, is interesting? You have to take into account what the public wants. Two out of three Quebecers do not want a referendum, do not want to deal with the question right now. Secondly, when you look at the economic situation in Quebec, we have $9.3 billion of federal transfers from the rest of Canada because we're poorer than the rest of Canada. So it's not a good time to talk about that. And I think that we have uh, at least 10 years before we can re-establish a balance and be uh, uh, comparably uh, as rich as the rest of Canada. But I have a question for you about the Charter. Uh, we uh, did speak between us about the Charter, and I think that the two of us, we wanted to deal with that question. Uh, with the two of us, we said that the key was people in authority. Uh, both of us uh, said the same thing. Uh, people who are in authority, that would have to be defined, should not have uh, a religious symbol on them. You and I agreed, and you submitted a, a, a bill, and I did. Um, I, I, I would like to hear you. you. You're very familiar with the PQ. Why do you think that Madame Marois refused to see the two of us to be able to uh, c conclude a charter before the elections? Well, I think, like an awful lot of other people, that the charter has become completely what has be what is at stake in this election. Indeed, it was a strategy to try to build a whole campaign on that issue. Uh, when when I hear we're going to stand up together, when I heard Mrs. Marois say we're going to stop apologizing because we exist, nobody's asking us to apologize, I feel it at, at ill at ease with that. And it's true that, quite frankly, at the latest last winter, before the election was called, we could have passed a charter uh, on values and even agree amongst ourselves that the discussion should continue because there are other issues that haven't been dealt, dealt with and uh, the, uh, the whole uh, funding of religious schools then advocate uh, equality between men and women. Well, there's something very clear. There's no one here in this studio that doesn't want to fight against the uh, of integrism. Uh, if there are any calls for um, uh, against women, against sexual min minorities, call the police officers to settle it. It's unacceptable in a democratic society such as Quebec to do otherwise. Now, in all religions, the evangelists, the Catholics, the Mus Muslim, the uh, uh, Jews, there are conservative wings. Without uh, there be calls to sending women back home, you have to have to learn to live together in Quebec. But, yes, hear us on some of, of our common values. And I don't see how the very fact that a woman is sent home by depriving her to work is going to settle something. You're waiting for the fruit to be ripe uh, on the uh, Canadian side, so you can go inside the Canadian con constitution? Will you consult Quebecers? Okay, I'm not going to fight on this uh, referendum, because as the future Premier of the Quebec, uh, the very first mandate, I will have a consultative process uh, started. I'll get a vote on the constitution and the future of Quebec. I have no difficulty in seeing all this in the first mandate. The split my God, I'm fed up with hearing tell about it. Sovereignty, sovereignty is like other values, it's other points of view. It doesn't belong to just one party. The sovereignty of Quebec is a deeply rooted idea in the hearts of many Quebecers, men and women, and it so happens there are a number who want to fight for a political party that is a sovereignist, prog prog progressive, ecological. This is the Quebec solitaire. I can call upon Quebecers, for example, who are sovereignist and progressive to vote for us. I think that Quebec really needs to reassert its position on the whole uh, idea of secularism. Of course, you have to have clear rules when there are requests made for religious accommodation so that secularism is in the charter of rights and freedoms of the individual because it has to be Christ crystal clear in written form. But I would call upon you to make a, disting a distinction between the principle and its application. The principle is a separation of uh, the state and churches. That has been achieved in the Quebec. To, to apply all this is to wonder how we'll go about it. We go as far as to say you have to send uh, grants to the religious schools, not 
Only one of you has raised this in the debate. What about gender equality? Let's not forget about that. <laughs> well, the election campaign is not completed. We're only halfway through. Now we're going to go into the closing statements. Thank you, Mr. Couillard, Mrs. David. This evening, I really put everything right on the table. I propose to get Quebec out of its dependency on oil, to ensure to everyone a decent uh, life in public services, to give wings to our people, to offer to our people its full freedom. I express my will willingness to have a fairer country for each one of us in order that they find their place. A healthy Quebec and a Quebec at work. Don't be pushed about by the inventors of a strategy that aren't delivering the goods. If you have recognized yourself in anything I've said, I call upon you to convince your families, your friends, and to tell them that the time has come to vote with your head and your heart in agreement with your most intimate convictions in all regions, in all cities, give to Quebec Solitaire uh, the ways and means of its ambition for the love of Quebec, for the love of a fair con country, a green Quebec. Well, there you have it, the leaders' debate for 2014.